Join us, MrTruck.com, for truck reviews, trade reviews, and accessory reviews. Kent with MrTruck.com, another review. Here's my son David, and we are checking out the 2021 GMC Yukon AT4. It's a loaded puppy. It's got four captain's chairs in it. It's got a, a 5.3 V8. And what's the power on that engine? It's got 355 horsepower and 383 foot pound torque. Awesome, man. It's at 10 speed. That was available, I think, last year. Now that's the new thing with the 10 speed with that. It's a punky, spunky little engine. It's like a 327 in cubic inches, but it goes. And it's, and it's rated at an 8,200 pound trailer with basically that makes it an 820 tongue weight. And it's a 323 rear end. So that's a fuel mileage rear end, but it, uh, it does well. We're pulling our Jeep Wrangler, our project Jeep with our tilt trailer. It's a nice load. We're just a, a hair over 7,000 pounds. And uh, we're having fun with this. Up here at Jackson Lake, you see the lake out over my left shoulder. It's froze. And the geese are flying like crazy. But it's beautiful out here. We're going to spend some time here this summer because we got a couple of boats now. But yeah, we're having fun with the AT4. It, uh, I think it's seat 7. <laughs> <laughs> you could go 6-8 if you didn't have those captain shares in the middle row. So come join us for the review. Today, we're reviewing this new GMC Yukon 2020 AT4. We're going to, of course, pull the trailer with it. I'm going to put my Jeep on the trailer. But I also got a new hitch to show you. It's a Rhino hitch. You've probably seen it. It's a beautiful hitch. Looks like a piece of art. Look at that. It's a beautiful hitch. Now because the Rhino hitch is a little longer, I'm putting these extensions on my safety chain. And we'll hook those up. And this one here, I'm going to put an electric jack on it next. It's lowering on there. It's really fairly level, I like where it's at. I may go up a little more. We'll load the Jeep and do some other adjustments, but I think we're okay. That's the whole idea. You want it all working together. If the trailer axles are level, if your trailer's level, and this is a torsion axle. So it's a little trickier too, like if you have leaf springs, equalizer in the middle, you know, regular leaf spring, slipper springs, or even, uh, you know, with the shackle springs. Those will equalize themselves and they'll transfer weight back and forth, but a torsion axle, they're independent. So you really want a torsion axle level. The torsion axles are great on horse traders, they're great on this kind of trader because it's low to the ground. But I've got to be really careful when I load these. I went to 14 ply tires and all that. So I think we're okay. I'm going to load the Jeep on here. We'll try it again. MrTruck.tv will be right back. <laughs> Look at this giant, it's over 10 inches, this main screen in the center of the dash here. And once I hooked up this trailer, it came up and says, hey, you want to create a profile. You want to do all these things for your traders. It knows the trader's plugged in. So it came up with this screen, the checklist and all that. 
and maintenance and you can make a profile so you can separate your traders you know for each trader you have different settings and all that so let's see what the checklist says conventional it is I guess it knows that and you go through all this checklist yeah, and that is pretty cool let's see if it rolls up there it is and that's similar to the checklist you use on a semi you have a safety checklist okay now let's see trailers uh, it does have a trailer let's see guest trailer uh, that's me I don't know if I want to do the whole profile thing it recalls the game now that's cool now on this the brake controller is on the other side which I'm going to forgive them now because they've done other things and it's on zero so you know, climb out and go on the other side this is the brake controller now on these GM SUVs. The truck's still on the right side, but they moved these over here to the left side. So there's your manual override, and I'm going to set the gain on it. So I'm going to go plus, so you can see up in the dash. Okay, the truck came. I guess the last person didn't use it or had the gain set on zero. So you push it there, you see that that's zero. So I'm going to take the plus and minus sign, and I'm going to jump it up. The gain, you see it said gain two. Gain three. And this has got new brakes on it, so I'm going to turn it up a little. We just had uh, Jayhawk Traders put new brakes on my tilt trader, so let me hit this. See, now I got gain. It's set at five. Looks like I get 100% when I push the manual over. Right. So that's cool. Now, two, before I take off, I'm going to find the mode. This is your gain up and down. I just raised it up to, when did I raise it up to? Five. I may go a little higher. And then here's your modes. Let's see if I can find where the, there it is, tow haul mode. I just put it in tow haul mode. See now then this knob below your four wheel drive buttons. I turn it to the left and I put it in tow haul mode, which is down there. But then you go up one. Oh, geez, there's normal. There's sport. There's off road. There's tall mode. So there's your modes. This thing has a whole lust list of things for your trader status, checklist, traders, and the settings. And this detects the trader that's on. Maintenance alerts. I guess I could put down 5,000 miles, change brakes. <laughs> but I don't know if I'm going to go through that. Theft alert. Tall hole reminder. Theft alert. Let's see. Guess trailer. I guess somebody steals a trailer. It's going to tell me. That's kind of cool. Well, these guys are really good. We'll show you the door, too, because the door tells you maximum everything. Gross axle weight rating, rear axle weight rating, your gower, your combined gross, your trainer gross, your tongue gross. I love it. It has all that stuff. Now, this we're talking about the push button four-wheel drive. The push button shifters. So you pull out for this one. You probably push in on that one. You pull out on this one. You push in on that one. And then at the bottom here, yeah, this is your manual control. If you want to go through the gears, all 10 of them, on your own, you can do that there. Okay, so I want, I want it to be normal drive. Okay, you got to push your foot on the brake. Pull it up, make some noises. Okay, emergency brakes off. I don't have the park brake on. Now, here we go. So now we're going to pull my Jeep over to Jackson Lake. Just look at all the beauty over there. But we're just pulling a little over 7,000 pounds. And that's right about where GM wants you to use a weight distributing hitch. This has actually a trainer capacity of 8,200 pounds. Which means 820 tongue weight. That's 10%. So yeah. These things have really gotten into the trailering world. And it is so cool. We got the tilt trader back from Jayhawk. Had to put all new brakes, and I'll do that video. Got all that done. It's about five years old, and the brakes weren't quite wore out, but the magnets were. And you know, I just tried to be on the safe side. I could hear the screeching back there, and I don't know if that was a magnet or if that was something else. But. They're, they're really getting good with these on towing traders. I was trying to see how we'll, we'll, we'll find, try to figure out how to run the modes for the air in the airbags. That may be what changes it. I got to figure that out because it's supposed to have about a two inch movement on the airbags. So those are good looking tires. Good gear. Trail Runner All Terrain 20s. Now what's cool about them is all the sipes. These things are like covered in sipes. 
Maybe that makes it better for ice and such. Then, the skid plate on the front. I mean, those red tow hooks, recovery hooks, look so cool. And you got a skid plate, and I think there's a, it might, might be just plastic on the front, and below that's a big gray one. We'll drive a camera, or drive over a camera so you can see that. Kelsey's not here this weekend, <laughs> so I mean, she'll be here for the next truck. But David's figuring this out. Okay, there's your slide. Okay. Now, go on the other side, the other seat. Let me see. Says I gotta hit this thing twice. Whoa! That's cool. Lays right down. Now, crawl back to that back seat. See if you could crawl between the seats, even though one's laying down. That's one way to get back there. And how you doing on headroom and legroom and everything? Not bad. Yeah, cool. Now, let's see if there's another. What's this strap does? Maybe this flips it up. There you go. Strap on the back flips it up. Okay. And then all the. Is there the shit? I know there's buttons in the back, but is there any buttons on the side? There's uh, plug ins. Yeah. Oh, here's a. Well, you find a button, push it. That's what I always tell the grandkids. Oh. oh. Well, that, that does that seat. seat. <laughs> so that okay. gets that one out of the way. Oh, yeah. Pull, look at that. Then you pull this yeah. to get there. Well, that's cool. I mean, I you, need, you might need those down, but let's go to the back and flip those other buttons. Got all this room back here because of that cool hitch. I have a lot of room. Okay, son. I'm going to just push a bunch of buttons. Let's see. Okay, son. Now, yeah, push, push buttons. Let's see what happens. Oh, that might be those for there it is okay you can, you can flip over you can flip over the front the ones middle. back here the middle row that's cool that flip the other one over what did they don't... well go to this what's that one is that one it does oh the that same one folds thing. the other one okay and keep going flip yeah so that's cool so it moves those up awesome okay now find some more buttons Okay, left, so left, yeah, left, left. Look at that. Oh, it's like magic. And then cool. Right side. Yeah. That is too cool now. Let me see. Back yep. Now now go up there. Now I don't keep it down. Now go up there and pull one of those seats back so you've all makes a nice little level area. Which you should. There you go. Boy, howdy. As long as you don't fall down the hole in between them. Cool, I like the armrest and all that. You can put a lot of stuff back here, man. You can sleep in this thing. That is so cool. Cool, and down there is probably, oh, look at that. Some more stuff. It's your tool kit to run the side. I don't even have spare tires anymore. That seems to be what's going away. It might be underneath. Yeah, pretty cool. Little tie downs all over the place. So it's nice to have tie downs. Okay, I'm gonna close the door on the back. Just like magic. Here's a little cubby hole. We have no idea what it's for. I suppose it's where you load your, your magazines. I don't know. I'll try it next to your big screen. But yeah, how deep is it, son? Mm. <laughs> yeah, hold something, whatever you want to put in there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now we're going to figure out how this console slides. We are going to do it. If you live long enough, you know everything. So look at that. So David finally figured out the button for the center console. Way up there on top. And then, watch the magic. Is that cool or what? And that's all the way open? Yeah. Look how much trim you got in there. Heck, you could put a lot of stuff in there. Now, wait a minute, I see a handle there. Open up the handle down in there. Does that open up something? What does that do? Oh, you got a tray. You got a tray. Stick your 45 in there or your whatever. Maybe your cell phone. Hiding your cell phone so nobody sees it. That might be an idea. Are these mats? Yeah, rubber mats. So you don't spill your drinks. I mean, that's a, yeah, it's kind of hard to get out of there. But... I guess you can't put something there and then close it. Because it'll smash it, but the little compartment you stick your phone or whatever your keys, 
And I think this is a charger. Yeah, go ahead and close. That's so awesome. As I recall, Ford was trying to buy that awesome system. And I don't think Chevy sold it to a more GMC. Yeah, that is so cool. I love hidden compartments. Now, besides this cool center console, rolling back and giving you more room to stash stuff in there, it also makes the cup holders and the heat controls and air controls closer to the second row seat people. Good idea. That's one thing I like about this, instead of like the, the heads up display, there's a heads up display button, like on a TRX, you had to go through all these screens to find it. Does it have heads up? Yeah. It's in a little... Zoom in on that. Isn't that cool? Keep adding info until we get a full. There it shows you how far away the vehicle in front of you is. I don't know if this has adaptive cruise, it sure could. Yeah, that is so cool. So if you're going to tip over or what you're going to do. Awesome possum. More the merrier. Heads up display. I love it. H-U-D. Is this one right here. Tells you tire pressure and a bunch of stuff. And below the, the drive is your manual transmission. Uh, you can put it in low range. Push the low range button, son. Now I go back up here where you see drive, and now it says L1, go to L2, L3, L4, L5, 6, L7, L8, L9, L10. All 10 speeds. I wish it would actually do that while you're driving so you can see what gear you're in, but I don't think you can. This thing has eight USB ports. Of course, it holds eight. Yeah, that head, the heads up display on this is 15 inches. It's bigger than any of the screens in here. Which is a bunch. I love the heads-up display. And this, you know, they came out last year. It was four-wheel independent suspension. The back's independent. What the inside camera looks like, and we'll do that. This has a lot of camera views. It's got, uh, let's see, how many is it? I actually counted them. And I wrote it down. Nine camera views. So if you can't back up and not run into a drive-through and all that stuff, then you just ain't trying. But where was I? I was talking about this AT4 Premium Plus package. Yeah, it's got HD surround division. You got the 360. Multicolor heads up display. We talked about that rear, uh, rear, well, pedestrian uh, alert. Info, infotainment system. 10 inch, 10.2 HD color touchscreen. Uh, connected. Navigation, voice recognition, Bluetooth, wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, uh, vehicle apps, personalization, capable. Rear seat media system includes rear dual uh, seat mounted 12.6. My phone. Anyway, we're going to look into all that with the grandkids. Now, this is a gorgeous blue. It's metallic blue. You've got to get right next to it to see the blue. It's been yeah. gray for a while. D2. D2. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful blue. It's a midnight blue metallic, and that costs you $4.95. Second row, heated buckets. I love those buckets back there. These are four buckets and a bench in the back. That is, if I'm reading this right, $370. The power release package replaces the standard package, second row seating. But, so the MSRP price on this is. Look, my camera's still on the Jeep. Seventy-five thousand four hundred fifty-five. That's about what vehicles are costing anymore. You get, you know, SUVs and the trucks. They are expensive puppies. That's probably almost like a midline because I'm sure the Denali gets you up over eighty thousand. And we just go through the Tahoe modes. We got it in that. Now I like GM's layout. You look at all their things like their HUDs display right there. Everything in GM, all the displays are easy to figure out. There's three buttons there. Those are the HUD display buttons. Right where you can get it, they're labeled, you know what they are. You don't have to go look through a bunch of, of uh, menus. You just look at the buttons. Very easy to figure things out. Now this one here, I've got it set on the camera settings. It's got like nine different views. They're so good about cameras, GM is. 
See, that gives me a little close-up of my... That shows the front, but it should be my hitch. But that's the front camera in a 360. And here's part of the... Oh, wow, look at that. There's your tire, so you can see how close somebody is to your side if you're going to hit the drive through window or hit a rock when you're off-roading. And then there's... Uh... <laughs> A condensed view of the trailer so you can see who's sneaking up on you who's about to pass you and if you're backing up you can see so many cool things this button here is your hitch that's magnified I don't, I'm not backing up to a trailer so you don't see a trailer there but that way you can get right above that hitch and know what you're doing uh, that one's part of your backup we'll put that in reverse you'll see that one activate there's a backup camera I'm going to activate the lines that show you where the trailer is and move your steering wheel and of course it moves. That way you're lining up with whatever you're trying to do, whether you're parking or backing up to a trailer. I use those. And then this one here is a wide view of what's behind you. And that is a wide view. With that you can also see on each side of the trailer when you're backing up. I love that. I love the cameras on this truck. seven that makes 700 pounds on weight so we're really good on our weights we can even pick up some hitchhikers huh or maybe not six <laughs> oh, if there's and i don't think there's seat belts for four in that back there might be three so i'm guessing this is a seven passenger you can get eight passengers so we do like a minivan if you got eight if you had a bench in the middle yeah cup holders galore new stuff you know that's one thing about these newer trucks it used to be you know i was more concerned about towing that's all you cared about but just to drive the damn thing and run all the controls you got to read the manual it's only about that thick so anyway push button four-wheel drive or push button shifting that's something i got used to I man i thought i got used to the knobs on the rams and now the fords and the jams are doing this push button thing i think honda ridgeline is too so they like to mess with us but you know it gets rid of a, of a shifter which we all like on the console, but then this gives you more room on the console. Try not to hit all the potholes, huh? <laughs> Heck, I, I gotta hit the potholes though. I'm on my little yeah, this road's falling apart all so the way around. Oh, so here's a week ago now. There's a lot, must be the frost can't be coming out, but that's usually what happens when the frost comes out in spring, the potholes start showing up. But yeah, it's always January, crying out loud, it's colder than all get out. Oh, let's see if there's something else. The magnetic ride control is really cool. I remember when Cadillacs came out with that, they put metal flakes in the shock reserve oil, and they could use those to magnetize them and control the shock. They call this a magnetic ride control, so it might be similar to that, but it actually it can really do smooth the road out. Of course, heel descent control, two-speed two transfer case, and automatic. It's a good plate on the front. Uh, it's electronic precision shift. Whatever that means, I mean, that means locks up the torque over most of these do now, except the first gear. Trailer and equipment, automatic stop start. 20 inch aluminum wheels. Yeah, it's got carbon gray metallic accents and all terrain tires. I thought this was aluminum, but you need GMC. They go all out real metal, not plastic. It's nice thing about GMC, you get more actual metal. And wood. One of these things has got wood. Where is it? Now I saw somewhere in a picture there's wood in the dash or the door. Looks like carbon fiber on some of it too. It's got a great looking interior. We're starting to use these giant screens in the dash. Yeah, let's see. And these mirrors, they're actually a little bigger than they used to be. They used to be narrower, and now they're a little bigger, which I like. So we're pulling a trailer that's eight and a half feet wide, but it's a flatbed, so you can see past it. Yeah. So we've got plenty of clearance, you know. You can still see all around that trailer, right? Yeah, yeah, I can see all the way back to the very the tip of the So this tail. kind of trailer, they're fine, yeah. Blind zone alert. Driving over the Platte River. Get pretty good flow for January. Uh, Ford collision alert. Actually, this works really well. Something comes up on you. It'll stop you if you're not paying attention. Following distance indicator is supposed to have how far you are from the person in front of you. And telebeam, high auto beam. I kind of like that, but I know truckers that I know, like Dan, don't like it. 
Now this is rated on the highway by the EPA at 20 miles to the gallon for 16 a city and 18 combined. So for a big truck, you know, it's not bad. I mean, these old buses like this used to get terrible fuel mileage in the old days. Now you got fuel injection. Leads to the automatic suspension on these. Well, we got a discount on the AT4 Premium Plus package. We got a thousand bucks off for that. Just the options alone are 10,360. This is cool. I'm glad it has a Jeep on. Now I've got something that looks cool to put on a trailer. And this trailer, uh, I'm looking forward to doing the uh, brake video because we had all new brakes, all new bearings, magnets, back plates, everything. Jayhawk Trader did that for me. And then, what I've always wanted, I bought the plates a long time ago, the triangular plates to put electric jack on it. And so I, I had Jayhawk weld those plates on, cut out the middle hole. Now I'm going to, when I'm working on the battery on this and a few electronics i got to finish up, we're going to put the electric jack on this. So that'll be in heaven. That means that uh, three of my traders have power jacks. Now I've got, what have I got, six test traders now. I've got two boat things. The jet ski is the boat. So I've got two there, an ATV trailer, an RV toy hauler, a dump trailer, it's my good old iron ball dump trailer and this tilt trailer, which is a load trail. This is, I mean, you can use it a little bit. You know what the speed limit is. See if you get some acceleration out of it or not. Which I'm right up there to 4,300 RPMs. Whoa, yes. These five threes, they're spunky. I'm not a big fan of them with trailers, but, you know, I'm, I'm thinking back 20 years ago. Now I think they're doing fine. This has that extra option for the radiator which i appreciate i'm thinking toyota needs to rethink their idea about taking the transmission coolers out but uh yeah it's an enhanced cooling radiator so i hope that means more cores bigger because that's a lot of the important stuff about longevity towing traders is having a transmission cooler i learned that a long time ago and it has all that so I, my old days of, of worried about a 4.3 and a 5.3 towing traders you know, that's historical for me. I think now they're actually doing very well. So I think this 5.3, if you don't go over the rating of the 8,200 pounds, you can be fine. And a 10 speed. So you got three overdrives, tow haul mode, factory brake controller. So I think this can be a good towing vehicle within its capacity. So I have no problem with this. I love the air ride suspension because you can keep leveling your trailer out. I haven't you're said quite... anything because I'm trying to drive. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is an easy drive. We're not in the mountains. We're not in heavy traffic. We're just cruising in the country, looking at the cornfields, the cattle grazing what's left of the corn. You hear that thing purr? It's a V8. This is pretty cool. And the AT4 is actually new on this Yukon. I think this is the first year, it's 21, to have that AT4 package, which is cool. They have known what they're doing on the heavy duties, but it's been on the half tons now probably four years. And I think that's nice. It kind of that way you know there's ice or snow that you can't see. And then I'm slick. I always watch my temperature gauge to see if it's 32 freezing. Because asphalt, a lot of times asphalt won't freeze till the past 28. Where concrete can freeze at 32 degrees. You get ice, you know, and slick. Yeah. So I always watch that. We're in winter mode now, so you gotta be paying attention. This is doing fine in tow haul mode. It gives you a little higher RPMs when you shift, and it stays at those higher RPMs longer. So I'm a fan. Not everybody's a fan of tow haul mode. I am. Visibility is pretty good on this thing. We the, the bottom, the door glass is down low enough that you can see everything. It's got all the blind spot indicators and the mirrors. It's a good looking dash. Someday I'll be used to the push button and the transmission. Yeah, I was totally lost. <laughs> <laughs> And someday I'll get used to these the little buttons in the steering wheel. They got a roller. Sometimes you push, sometimes you roll. I'm not quite used to that. But I will be. So it's it just a time. scroll through on the mon yeah, monitor. Yeah, sometimes you scroll through and sometimes you activate it by pushing on it. And one of them probably is more pushing, one more more rolling. It's amazing how much better good looking wheels make a trailer. Now we're a truck. I mean, it's like, <laughs> it's like Eric, my youngest son. He's got that. Oh, it's a 69 Chevy, whatever it was. Really cool looking wheels, and the 
truck's not that special. It's it's got primer. It hasn't been painted. It's got a cool steering wheel. It's got cool wheels. So that truck looks cool. We'll haul that around. Then we're gonna take your. You got like chrome wheels on your. Was that seventy-eight Ford? Seventy-nine. Seventy-nine. Last year that body style. It's got the square headlights and a big. It looks like a Dodge grill. I call it. But it's a really popular truck. And that same truck was the same clear back to 73. So you can take that 73 through 79, put any grill you want in it from those eras, and change them however you want. Which I always thought was nifty. But that's the run of that series. Yours is a what, F-150? Yeah. 351 yeah. Windsor or whatever it is. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's a C6 automatic. So we're going to load that on the trailer a few times because it's a good looking truck. Look at the river. It's pretty deep. See, in the fall, that was, river was way down low. Now we're filling everything up again.